Hey, there we go. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? I see we got Kyle, RV Kids TV, and Jay's in here. How you guys doing today? We'll wait for some folks to get pile in here, and then we'll get started. I'll finish getting set up here while you guys visit. Get it shared out. Make sure you're hitting that like button, please. Hey, Gunslinger, how you doing, buddy? Trying to get it shared out here. Hold on. Hey, how you doing there, uh, Dave? Gary Copeland, good to see you guys. I'm still getting it all shared out here on other social media. Hold on. Try to get it shared out here. Be with you guys in just a second. Hey, Kyle. Uh, trying to get it all shared out here for you guys. Hey, Chris and Sharon Tomstead, how the heck are you guys? Is Gil in here? Hey, Gil, how you doing? Let me get a link up there for you, buddy. Sharing it out, so... I think I got it all done right. Let's see. Let me get it all started out here. We have Kyle. We have our RV Kids TV. We have Jay. We have Gunslinger Outdoors. Gary Coplin, Creative Music. Southern Ohio Prepping. Chris and Sharon's Homestead. Gunslinger Cat Patton Family Compound. And... Look about it. Welcome to the live stream, you guys. We get uh, Gil up here. There he is. Hey. <coughs> I'm getting her all cheered out. I kind of didn't get it done in time. Yeah, I know how that goes. I just, I just was out there plowing snow, moving everything, getting ready for the big storm tonight, tomorrow, and it's like, oh crud! Run inside. You got <laughs> snow? More snow there? It's supposed to be supposed to be tonight, according to the thing, we're supposed to get up to three inches and up to three inches tomorrow. 
Oh my goodness, we had nice weather here today. It was it was nice out there. It started snowing me a little bit while I was out there on the tractor, then it stopped. It warmed up a little bit, so I'm not sure, what, but it's cloudier than heck, and it looks like it's going to come in, but. Uh, well, better you than me. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, you're going to use your asset to sit down, huh, Jay? Good idea. But I don't know what I'll use my asset for. Probably the same thing, sit down on my behind. Pepper Smith, hey, got off work right on. Gonna go out to the range? I wanna go. Okay, got that ready. <clears throat> I gotta get this one up. Yeah, I'm You're about going live right after this, right, Gil? At five o'clock, yeah, five o'clock Mountain Time. Uh, I've just been receiving emails from uh, Doc Bones and Nurse Amy going over topics and stuff. So, yeah, they're gonna. It's gonna be basically uh, a lot of questions from the side chat. We will not be talking about um, coronavirus. It's about your preps at home, and oh, cool. you know stuff you need to have for your first aid kit and stuff like that. Basically, setting up your assets, <laughs> medically you wise. Yep. Kind of goes hand in hand. Uh. Yep. Okay. So I, I'm flipping around here. Yeah. Um, I need to see. And we're we'll just wait for a few more folks to come in here, and we'll get started, you guys. Don't forget to smack on that like button for us. Share this out with your other social media. Make sure you're visiting with each other up and down the line there. Well, I put out a live about about a two-minute live about four minutes before the hour, reminding people about mine and yours. <laughs> I didn't have time to make a regular video. I just went live. Hey, guys, this is what's happening here. I see you there. Bye. <laughs> Oh, uh, okay. Let's do this stuff here. Well, we're not going to talk about Corona because there's just too much stuff out there. And people are telling too much stuff that they don't really com comprehend. So, yeah. And somebody heard I'm, here, somebody sees something on one channel. Oh, this is the what's coming out. Oh, no, no. And it's, <laughs> the guy was just making a joke. I'm not a doctor, so I don't want to tell people something that I'm not sure about. So yeah, I mean, uh, and, and nurse, uh, and Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy don't want to talk about it tonight. They're burnt out on it. It's like, um, yeah, we've been telling everybody, telling everybody, and people are arguing with them. You know, you know, yeah. Joe, Joe blows off the street that you know have been have their uh, aluminum foil hats on. <laughs> yeah, I'm not wearing my tin foil hat today. So yeah. Hey, travel around. How you doing? Good to see you. Uh, Jay's got his hat on. <laughs> Jay's always got his hat on. But that's a good idea. You know, swiping a NASA spacesuit would protect you from the coronavirus. <laughs> I am feeling better, Gunslinger. Thanks for asking. We're trying to get back up on track here. Yeah. We're yeah. going to be doing a panel on Monday night. I'm not sure what the uh, the topic is. We're going to have a good one. I'm going to get all the panel members together tomorrow, and we will have something to put out there for you guys on Monday night. Uh, hey, thanks. Lou. Hey, Lou. Hey, thanks, Gensley. Yeah, I've been uh, I've been hitting it up hard with uh, this stuff and the uh, Zycam and the vitamin C. Yeah, I went and got the uh, big bottle of vitamin C. <laughs> big book, a big one. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be getting, uh, try some vitamin D too. Yeah, I got my all my multivitamins, everything going on. But I'm just hitting up on the other stuff so I can uh, get rid of this runny nose. If uh, you're an old, if you're an older person, this time of year you should be taking vitamin D. Mm -hmm. That's what my doctor told me because uh, the 
not enough sun coming out of the sky. Okay. So I take one, one. I think it's fifteen thousand pill for vitamin D. I take one a week, and he said that's more than enough to keep you healthy. Yeah. Let me check this other thing real quick here. Okay, what we got going on here? All right, wait just a few more minutes. Make sure you guys are uh, visiting with each other. If you don't know each other, make sure you're getting to know each other. All right, got that up. I got to show you what I want to save up for here while we're waiting. Let me see, how do I do that? I always have to remember how to do this. Uh, Find out how to share this page out. My, this is on my wish list here. I want to get one of them babies. Yep. And then convert it myself. Actually, I'd like the one directly dead center below there. Let's see, get back over on that page. Yeah, that's the uh, right here. Yeah. If you look at it, they turned that into a. Uh, uh, you know, a, a regular four x four gave it an extended cab on it. So basically, it's a super pickup, and that you can go over fifty five in the states that limit trucks to fifty five because that's only two axle. It can go sixty five, seventy, whatever the posted speed limit is. That would be a great one to have too to convert over because you could put like a camper shell or something on the back end of it. Well, you can, you can actually buy the hoops for it. Oh, really? Yeah, the key, yeah, it's still set up. All you need just need the hoops and the and the military and canvas. The canvas for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I'd want something with a little insulation so I could just sleep in it too. On that way, you got yeah. somebody driving all the time, and you can be in the back cooking or sleeping or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. That one there. There's one with the hoop and stuff on it. Yep. All right. You want to go? Of course, here? if you weren't practicing for the end of, end of times, you could have something like that there. <laughs> Actually, thinking about it, those motorcycles would be good in a. Um, yeah, I was looking uh, for something. If you have an old, an, an, old, an old one. Like a, like a, a 1964, 65, 63 uh, Harley. Like that uh, right there. A, a sports no, that's not what I was looking for. Yeah. You want something like a, like an old Harley Sportster or an electric Yeah, that's what blue. I thought that was. Because then. It didn't bring up everything I wanted it to. You know, the older um, the older ones, you know, are a little bit more EMP proof. It didn't bring up. That's why I hate my Chromebook. It doesn't bring up everything I want it to bring up. My HP brings up the pages I'm used to. When you type in what you're looking for, it brings up just that. Yeah. This brings up a little bit of everything. Well, who do we got out there? Um, Gary Cullen, uh, the Crazy Scotsman. Hey, how you doing, Crazy Scotsman? Good to see you. Uh, Prepper Smith. And purpose have said, or an 81 panhead. 81 panhead would be a pretty good cruiser, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I stopped riding motorcycles back in 72. Oh, man. It, it just got too crazy out there. But in, an, in a disaster situation where everything's gone downhill, and nobody's out driving around much at all. You know, you have just a few people driving around. You get a uh, a nice good old Harley and put some uh, uh, and put some extra extra uh, muffler pipe on it so you can quiet it down a bit. You know, you'd be great out there. You know. Uh, traveling around. Yep, everybody's here. I thought I saw um, Dave out there on the side chat at one point. 
Dave's yep. out there, I think. Yep. yep. Or he was, anyway. Yep. He needs to be up here. He didn't grab that link. Nope. He said he's not out there. <laughs> That's right. Dave's not out there. Grumpy's out there. Dave's not here. <laughs> Uh, great Cheech and Chong bit. That was a good one. Yeah, my brother had the album, and every all through the the comedy album, they kept inter interjecting, you know, knock, knock, knock. hey man, get me, let me in, Dave, Dave, Dave's not here. Dave's not here. <laughs> oh man, I'm still thawing out from being out on the tractor, man. <sighs> Yeah, I finally, it took me about an hour to get my coyote running, and because uh, the my nine N is only uh, two wheel drive. It's an old nineteen thirty nine Ford nine N tractor, two wheel drive, and there's a lot of ice out there now, where the snow's been melting and freezing, melting and sne freezing. So it doesn't just it's not getting traction. I need to put chains on it. So I got the four wheel drive uh, coyote going. And I say, with the loader buck, and I, oh, yeah, I was able to uh, make tracks. So I could dig in ahead of myself and clear snow out of the way rather than trying to drag it behind me. I like can't believe you've got snow there, right? It's been such a mellow winter. I don't think about snow even yet. Yeah. Usually we have like this much snow on the ground and everything's piled up everywhere, but we haven't had nada this year. Well, not enough to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You gonna come up here, Dave, or what? Oh, he's not Dave today. He's grumpy. Yeah. Got a nope, a yep, a grumpy. Sneezy snow. Holy cow. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, okay. You must be wearing the seven dwarfs. Yeah, well, I got Doc coming on later, so <laughs> we'll have Grumpy, Doc, and I'm be, I'll be happy tonight, so I guess that makes uh, Nurse Amy Snow White. <laughs> okay, so. All right, who's got their assets ready for a plan? Who's got a plan ready for their assets? How about you, Prepper Smith? Tell us about the plan. Remember, you guys, if you have a question or a comment for the for us up here on the panel part, uh, make that in capitals so we can both see it or whatever and try to get back to you on it. Oh man! I want to know. I my idea of having a plan for your assets is to make sure that whatever you have, make sure that you're consistent with it, whether it be your food or your medical supplies or your water, or whatever. Make sure you're always consistent in rotating rotation of it, because if you got bad food, how are you going to live? And if you don't know it, water go does go bad, you guys. If you store it. Mm -hmm. So well, that is something you have to rotate as well. Now, Prepper Smith says, all my plans are worst case scenario with just basics. Everything I have is mobile. That's the way it should be, too. Uh, you know, I, I was thinking about, I've been thinking about a lot of stuff while I was sick. And... When I first started prepping, things were all sort of like a hardcore thing, uh, making sure you had, I, I don't know, 10, 12 years worth of food. But things are evolving so quickly, you know, things are going to be totally different by the time we even get through our part of life and prepping stuff for the younger people, you know. As you should, I feel you probably should have, in my opinion, at least two years of food put away, but not up to 10 or 12. Like I originally started uh, trying to tell everybody at first. So if you have uh, 
two years, maybe a little more than two years, that gives you enough time to manage that food. How many years do you guys think that we should that you should have put away for hard days ahead for SATF or whatever you guys want to call it? I think two years is plenty, and that way you can manage what you have. And I'm just talking about food. I'm not talking about water or anything like that. Well, I, I'm kind of along the lines with Anthony and uh, Reed on this one. You need to have at least several years to cover in case your garden fails on you in one year. Several years as in three, four, ten. Well, if you if you if you're out where you're like you're already in, you have your place like uh like Anthony Reed and I we already are at our bug out locations. We've got it. We're out away from everybody, and uh, we're setting up our gardens and stuff, and go, we're going to try to grow all our food. But you know you need to have stuff stored enough to cover you know at least one or two years in case there's a failure or you have a real poor crop because you never can tell you may have to like two years in a row where you only get half as much as what you need. So you're going to need, you know, more food to carry you over for that time until you get another good crop coming in. So you're talking about recovering over your already covered. So you'd be four years in, right? You no, know, right now I have, uh, I have about three years worth of food and we, but my wife wants to get seven. Seven. Yeah, but that's but just, you're already at a, lo a bug out location. What would happen if your bug out location got compromised and you had to relocate? Yeah, a lot of dead bodies surrounding it. <laughs> <laughs> because you got to realize my bug out location is a compound, not just my compound. It's the entire quarter mile city. It's yeah. quarter mile state. There's only four ways in and out. And the entire town is planning on shutting down and barricading. And so we got 400 people to, to defend this place. And everybody has a garden. You know, you know, some people have like five acres of garden. Others have like a half acre. But, you know, and just about everybody has at least one year or two years of um, stored food. So you have Prepper Smithy saying that it's impossible to transport two years of food and for him, you know, because he does he's not add a uh, Permanent bug out location. It doesn't sound like yet. Yeah, you know, you got to have a have a location with good, honest teammates. You know, um, community members, whatever you want to call it. But um, if you like, if you have the uh, number ten cans and stuff, um, I can haul a, a, a two year supply in my trailer, no problem. Uh, well, your microphone can't hear you. There you go. <laughs> that darn switch keeps turning off. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you have cargo containers, right? Yeah, I got two cargo containers here. Uh, I've got um, a couple. I got a, 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 car, a, a cargo uh, trailer, one of those uh, uh, 12 footers. Yeah. And then I got another uh, two axle 12 footer for hauling big stuff on. But uh, so if you had to relocate again, you'd still have a way of getting some of your uh, storage goods out, right? Basically, if I have to vacate, it's going to be a uh, uh, a rat fab. Run away to fight again. Yeah. Fight another day. <laughs> and basically, it'd be you know, take what we have, go out later that night, come back while they're all celebrating, getting drunk, take, you know, kill them all. Hey, CR, welcome to the discussion. Hey, CR. Yeah, uh, Prepper Smith, he wants to know how you plan on retreating from your compound. Like I said, I just plan to go out, turn around, and come back, because they were probably not expecting <laughs> somebody to turn around and come back on them. And before they have a chance really to set up good, you know, uh, do, do a, a, a stealth uh, hunt on them. <laughs> of course, of course, when you figure my 
my oldest son is a is he's a, he's a marksman. He's a long range marksman. And my uh, youngest son, yeah, he he's he has all his knives and stuff, and he likes sneaking up and meeting sneak up and lift your pocket, take your belt off, take your shoes, and you don't, know, don't even know he's been there. So, yeah, it'll just be, you know, run, come back. While they're all partying and getting drunk, take them out. See, that was why I was thinking, showing those pictures of those deuce trucks. If you had something like that, you could still take some of your uh, dry goods with you, some, yeah. of your, some of your water with you, and still have room for your other family members or whatever and yeah. at least get away with something yeah but uh, yeah we you know like, you know like i say you know our our situation here is different than a lot of people's because you are they, at your bug out location our our, our our the little city here we found it's you know like i said it's only a quarter mile square and there's two roads on each side and the two roads come off, come across the railroad tracks, and we can barricade it there. The other ones go out towards the mountains, and we can barricade it there. Well, there should be a, if it's a quarter a uh, quarter mile town township. Well, it's a city. Yeah, most people you should have enough people there that own surrounding land, mm -hmm. where if you had to, everybody could pick up and go to another location. Well, long long enough to let whoever came in and. Uh, turned upside down the apple cart yeah. to come in take what they want and leave again. And then you can come back in yeah. to the location. The thing is though, like I said, you know, we got, there's over 400 people here. Everybody hunts, everybody gardens, everybody has food storage, you know, everybody cans and, you know, anybody comes in, it's going to have to, it's going to be a substantial force to force us out. And, you know, people have horses and tractors and everything else. And, you know, so if they're, they're coming one way, you know, the plan is, hey, let's go send send some guys, uh, patrols out and come at behind them. Yeah. Well, there, you know, I said if your boy is that sneaky, he should be a pathfinder. Uh, he couldn't get in the military because at the, at the time he went for his, his um, medical, they were poo-pooing everybody that day. And say, oh, you got a, a crooked spine. It's like, bull, bull pucky. He's been to the chiropractor. He's got a perfect spine. So he, he just got pissed off at the doctors and stuff. And he goes, ah, screw you guys. And then listen, <laughs> Slinger, he's saying he has uh, small barrels that are sealable. So that there's, if I'm reading that right, Gunslinger, You've got them spread out along the countryside, or are they like buried or something like that? That's what it sounds like. They're uh, buried little ca caches. Yeah, it sounds like they're <laughs> caches. Yeah. yeah. Is that what you're saying, Gunslinger? Is you have caches spread out along a, a certain corridor or whatever? Hmm. That is a pretty good idea. If you have, uh, if you know where you're going, if you have to, if you're good. Most people are going to hunch in, hunch in or bug in, whatever you want to call it. But if they have to leave, they have to have that that plan of where they're going to be going. Yep. So if you know where you're going to be going, you could put your your caches in along the way. And that way you could move between each one to get to your next location. You've cached ammo mags, yeah. I'm not... Whiskey, oh yeah! Ooh Somebody finds that whiskey, you're in trouble, bud. Cool. All right. You know, Dave just sent me a fair use policy to use on my videos when I have anything that might be quote copyrighted to, so I don't get dinged. I have to put it up at the beginning of my videos whenever I have anything like that. Fair use what? It's uh it's uh the fair it's called fair uh 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 let me pull it back up here on my side, other other screen here. Uh fair use policy, uh copyright disclaimer under section one oh seven of the Copyright Act of nineteen seventy six, allowances made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching. That's what I do is air all my stuff is teaching. 
uh, scholarship and research fair use is is, is uh is a use permit uh, permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringed. Nonprofit educational, once again, that my thing is listed as educational, and personal tips in the balance, balance in the favor of fair use. So, yeah, so they, they, they ding me for showing that one with the, um, um, when I did the EMP yeah. for that, for the short piece <coughs> of the clip. So some some radio some lady on the ra on a radio show says she has the copyright for it, and uh, they all have radio radio doesn't have copyright stuff on videos, <laughs> and so yeah, there a bunch of, bunch of people are fight. Uh, other people have used it and gotten dinged by her, and they're all fighting. saying, no, she does not have the copyright on it. Yeah, get used to copyright. Yeah, but if you have that at the beginning of your video, like on a live stream, you know, you know, they pops up that little video, and I pop those. Videos. If we have that up there in the beginning of it, showing for ten seconds, recovered. They can't ding you. Better send me one then. Yeah. <laughs> Beyond Beauty Three, great to see you. Welcome to the live stream. So that uh, Jewish redneck prepper, I didn't see you sneak in that side door. How you doing? Shalom. So, yeah, that's basically right, you guys. Now you're getting the idea how to uh, use your plan to protect your assets. If you're, like I said, most people are going to bug in. They're going to hunch down and stay where they're at until they get compromised. Yeah. So if you don't have that backup plan of where you're going to be going and what you, how you're going to get your assets there, then you're not, you're not having a successful plan. Yeah. And I, you know, I got, to, I also have the two tractors and the one the nine N is, is a cross country puller. So long as it's, you know, even if it's too snowed in, but it's, um, if I have chains for it, I can just, and I will have chains by next year. But uh, yeah, I can hook a big trailer up to it and just you know, put put, put across the farm farmland. <laughs> yeah, say, try to follow me. <laughs> I'm going across Farmer Jones's property. I'll see you over by blah blah blah. Yeah, Deadhead, welcome, my friend. Yeah. Who else has a? Uh... A plan to share with us about their assets. Well, since Dave's not coming up here, I know what his his plan pretty much is. He's made arrangements to get some horses, and he's going to uh, pack everything. Uh, one of the extra horses is going to be a pack horse, and he's going to pack the stuff he has on it for him and Charles, and they're riding out. Ah, Prepper Smith brought up a good uh, point down there. The one that begins with my worry. You my might want worry to is. Yeah, you might want to throw that up. Get everybody on it. <laughs> Dave, you've so told that so many times. Yeah. You got to have, have a Oh, plan. come on, Dave. Anybody can say that. Yeah. But uh, Prepper Smith's right. You need to have a plan to distribute among you know, everybody, you know, what they're going, you know, how much, you know, what they, what they're going to be carrying, and if you're doing trading, how much food is equal to a full mag of anything, you know, full magazine or whatever, or a box or whatever. You need to have plans set out ahead of time. That's where Excel spreadsheets come in hand, handy. Spreadsheets, those are scary. <laughs> You can actually make your plans, you guys. This this what uh, we're talking about is is as you're going from point A to point B, if you should have to do that. You know, we all don't want to, but if we should do yeah. have to, you have to have that plan in place. And it's like Prepper Smith saying, you know, you may have to trade some of your skills to get what you need along the way. So you want to make sure you have that in and stall it into your plan so that when you get somewhere and you start bartering with somebody that you're not uh, giving away the farm, so to speak. Yeah. Let me go. Let 
How many how many skills do you have to trade? Write that down. If you don't, have, it's uh, easy to uh, forget stuff when you're out there in a bad situation. To remember what you, what you actually have that you can trade. Yeah. I mean. Yep, skill set is the great, greatest asset. If you, and uh, comes down to making sure you have all your skills written down. I mean, yeah. it's just easy to forget if you're if you don't have it written down for that situation. I mean, we sit here on these live streams and we talk about it all the time, and we always come up with different skills every time because you just sit here and. Uh, Go through it over and over and over again until you finally remember everything that you're good at. Not everybody's good at the same thing. Yep. I mean, so you know, sometimes you you, know, you do something all the time and you don't think of that as a skill. I was, oh yeah, I do that all the time. It's like, okay, there's a skill. Or yeah, somebody else in your group, they may have skills that you don't know about. So make them write their skills down too. Yeah, uh, Gunslinger pointed out a very good fact right there. All depends on the type of S A T F. Yeah. And sometimes it may not be a full blown S H T F. It just may be, you know, a life changing event that's, you know, yep. gonna take, you know, a couple months to recover from. Yeah, you know, like a hurricane or something. It could be something like a flood where you're not gonna be gone forever, but you are gonna have to be gone. Yeah. Yep, yep, you're right, CR. Even if you create all the time. Yeah, Prepper Smith's a lot right there. He said, uh, someone last night said that you are as strong as your weakest link. However, even the most meek have a skill set of some kind. No matter what you think, it, you might not think it's an asset, but it, it, to somebody else, it could mean everything to them, you know? Yeah. Hey, old Ben, how'd it go, how'd it go at the dock yesterday? Must have gone okay. I see you're still kicking. Okay, I got that, that, that. Okay. I'm getting, I'm getting seasick here, bouncing between all three uh, monitors. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm maintaining the email up here so I can watch for uh, uh, Doc Bones and Nurse Amy's emails. You're not late, old man. You're right on time. That's right, Prepper. Yeah, along the same lines, what Prepper uh, Smith says there, you know, I'm not worried about the guy that has, uh, has uh, you know, a hundred different guns and has fired them all twice or three times. I'm worried about the guy that has one or two rifles or one or two types of guns and he fires them a whole bunch <laughs> and practices. It's that Somebody guy. likes to go out there and waste a thousand rounds just to uh, have a good time. Or no, just to make sure he develops his muscle memory. Yeah. It's like um, um, Alvin York. Yeah. When he got in the army, he didn't want to be in the army. When he got in, they found out, whoa, this guy is the best shot around. That's something else you have to think about, too. If you're going to be bugging out, how many rounds of ammo do you have to take with you? Yeah. What's, what are you packing? How much? Yep. How much food? How much ammo? What's your plan on your bug out? Are you bugging out for good, or are you um, running away to fight another day?
That's about right, right there. Let me get that put up there. That's perfect. Yeah. There's something, yeah, that's something I was talking about bug out bags and stuff like that. I mean, there was a bag that everyone used to refer to back in the 60s and 70s. I don't hear it anymore. And that's the rat fad. The runaway to fight another day bag. Basically, it's, you know, what you're going to take with you to go out there and turn around and come back. <laughs> and those of you that are just sitting at home and maybe in an apartment or something like that, maybe a duplex in the city, uh, do you have some place to go if you have to bug out? And if you're like in uh, L.A. or San Francisco... Forget about the storm drains and sewers. People are already living down there. If you have don't have a place to go, make sure that you're looking for a place to go that has plenty of water anyway. Yeah. Good water. Yeah, you got to make sure the water that you're thinking about is actually good, not you go, go you know, find out once you get there. Oh, crud, this is runoff from a chemical plant. Hey, Tyler, glad you came by. You're working? <laughs> Sitting at the, at the uh, tobacco shop? Is that where you're at? Pepper Smith says another good point there is make sure that you wind uh, wherever you wind up that you have the skill to pr protect your shelter or form one. Yeah, be able to put one together. Remember, wherever you wherever you're at and you decide to go to, you have to have a plan after you get there. You have a plan for where you're at right now, but you have a plan for when you get to the second <laughs> location. Or maybe even a third location, depending, you know. Mm. Hey, Howie. How are you? Good to see you. Vanessa Kitty, you too. Welcome. Hey, y'all. Howie, Vanessa. Whew. Yeah. Will and Gill. It rhymes. He's we're he's a poet today. How he's being a poet. And he don't even know it. <laughs> but his toes sure show it. They're you long fellows. Change. What'd you get us? You get anything good? Right. Um, That's another thing you guys should think about. Make sure you have some seeds and stuff on hand. There are ways of protecting them so that they'll last. <sighs> yeah, my mom picked up a can of uh, garden seeds, num a number 10 can that was uh, nitrogen packed. So there's no oxygen in there with the seeds. And each, uh, they're packed, so it's a little pack full of packets of different types of seeds for corn spinach, radishes, stuff like that for emergencies. Now, that can, it, that can was bought in 1971, and I have it now, and it's, it hasn't been open. No bulging in it at all, so, you know, the nitrogen's still nice and tight in there. So those seeds should last forever. Yeah, I think so. I think even the ones you get to store, uh, uh, I've got a tin downstairs in my stuff where I bought tons and tons of garden seeds and then I put them in one of those seal meals, the bags, and then I sealed all that up and took all the air out of it. And then I rolled them all up and, you know, just rolled it up like a piece of paper and stuck it in a can. Yep. Thing is, uh, 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 for um, nowadays, you don't, you got to hunt for some uh, heirloom seeds. Because some of these, yeah, yeah these uh, GMO seeds and stuff and the modified ones, sometimes they will not reproduce. Any, any seeds you harvest from won't reproduce. Uh, you can get corn, 
and it'll give you an ear, ears of corn. But if you try harvesting that corn and grow that corn, it won't it won't do anything. It won't grow anything. Uh, I've tried yeah. that myself. Yeah. They do something to it when they uh, package it up. I can't remember what I read about it, but I can't remember how he'd be able to tell us. Ooh, how he got picked up that was given some chestnut trees. With new tubers. Oh, oh man. You are years. dead. He got a bunch of stuff there. What's that mean? Uh, he, Prepper Smith is saying something about uh, foreign soils. Yeah, he's talking about soils that you know, if you bu you've bug out to a different location, you've gone quite a ways, and you're not used to, used to the way the soil is there. He said, uh, back up farther, he says, uh, keep a bag, uh, uh, cycled bag of organic fertilizer to start growing in foreign soils. So if you go, like, if, if you're from the city you bu or, or the suburbia area, and you bug out to the mountains, you know, it's a different type of soil for what you need to grow and you may need to start, you know, um, have some uh, organic soil to get your seedlings started and everything going so they'll be able to take and grow in that other type of soil to have a chance to get it cultivated right and developed right like how you would do. <laughs> or you can just do, do your own mulch by, you know, keeping your garbage separated and making it your own mulch. Yeah. Mm. One of the things, you know, I, I, you know, I like to point out is that not every SHTF situation or even a Tawaki situation is going to make everybody have to bug out. Depending on what the situation is, things may change. Oh. Neighborhoods may come together. You may not have to bug out. Uh, you know, you, you suddenly everybody really realize, okay, we either we pull together or we're all going to die. So we're all going to pull together and we're going to, you know, you know, develop our neighborhoods, tear up our lawns, plant gardens, you know, block off our neighborhoods, secure it, and, you know, what, or whatever. Or, they're, you know, the few, yep. the few, uh, make you know, your own compound. Yeah, the, the few brigands that come around may all of a sudden get wiped out really quick by all the hunters. <laughs> Marauders, yeah, they'll take over. But if you come together as a neighborhood, become your own, basically your own group. Yep. Come, become a CAG. <laughs> a NAG neighborhood. <laughs> a CAG or a, 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 a MAC, uh, Mutual Assistance Community. Oh, very good, Gunslinger. Very good. Always read up on what uh, on which edibles are hard and easy to grow in all weather or climates. And which ones grow in which locale locations too? Like uh, something that grows good where um, Anthony's at may not grow too good where I'm at. I know some things that grow good here. He's talked about he can't get certain things to grow down there in uh, South Carolina. Not only that, if you're uh, living somewhere and then you have to move, say, change location, go up north or south, whatever, you know, make sure that you know what the growing cycles are there, not just yeah. where you're at. Because uh, you may have to save stuff back and store it up for when you have to bug out. Hmm. It's, like, it's like the um, that one book everybody should have, the uh, Farmer's Almanac. Now, you want to get a couple of years worth of those because, you know, they, 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 they go on cycles and stuff, but they'll tell you, you know, different locations, when to plant, and when's the best time to plant, when's the best time to harvest, you know, what to plan for. Now, Howie, I disagree, agree, uh, disagree with that. There's a, there's a third type of uh, crop. There's a type of crop that grows grows in Southern California all year round. 
<laughs> Even when it's hot and cold, it just grows all year round. That's well, it would depend on uh, how how cold it gets, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like strawberries. Strawberries can grow all year round. Yeah, you know, if you're in the right climate. And you know, it, you know, up in uh, Northern California where I, um, we lived, uh, blackberries was uh, seasonal. But down in Southern California, them suckers grew all the friggin' time. Tibor, hey, hey, Tibor. Yeah, you need yeah. to learn the wild, wild edibles in that area. I'm just gonna say that. Make sure that there's lots of the edibles right out in the forest that you can pick up and eat. Yeah, old man, put that one out there. There are a lot of free um pdf documents you can download from different universities for areas you might be traveling to go ahead and da download it print it out put it in a little in a binder <laughs> all right how you better go ahead and pack a bug out bag because uh, yeah. Several they're, people are going to be trying to kidnap you. Hunch down, Howie. They're coming for you. Yeah, they're going to put, they're going to put you on a little throne and have you rule the garden. <laughs> <coughs> Funny, Tyler. <sighs> if that's the case, you better start looking around a little bit. There's lots of people like him on YouTube. Yeah. <sighs> Well, so, you know, the problem is, how is up there on Victoria Island? And what's quick, the, uh, you've got a live stream to go to. Yeah, my live stream starts in an hour or so, so i got another 20 minutes before i got to duck out of here to start setting stuff up. Um, the uh, thing is with Howie, he knows a lot of the people on that island. He, he may not be telling this. I bet he has that entire Victoria Island ready to lock down in a disaster. <laughs> And fed everybody off from the mainland. That's right. Gunslingers got it right. Plan for, <coughs> plan for anything. Plan for anything and everything, actually. And yeah. if you do all that, then you'll be okay. All right. Somewhat okay, I guess. Because no matter if you guys are like me, uh, Murphy's Law, anything that can go wrong will. All right, and so I want to. That up Main there. thing is, make sure you got your water put together. Even though it can go bad, you're going to need enough water to be able to travel with if you have to bug out. And you can rotate it in and out, you know, just because uh, you don't use it all the time doesn't mean that you uh, can't rotate it. I think the only reason it really goes bad is because of the stuff they put in it. All right. Well, well, before I duck it out here, oh yeah, thank you. Yeah. So uh, I have uh, I have Nurse Amy and Doctor Bones um, on my uh, live in an hour and seven minutes from now, and I'll be taking a lot of qu any questions, you know, or any question, just about every question they can from the side chat. And we're going to be talking about basic, uh, you know, basic preparedness uh, for me uh, survival medicine. You know, what we, what you need, first aid kits, uh, medicines, uh, fish mocks, stuff like that. So bring your questions and... Oh, Howie has his own island to go to. <laughs> Different than Vancouver Island. He has a bug out location. <laughs> so, but anyways, yeah, so this is in an hour, guys. And uh, I will see you all there. I gotta, I'm going to step out now and uh, get something to eat and set mine up and get ready to go. So somebody else coming up here and uh, help Will out, all right? All righty. So I'll see you guys in an hour. All right, Gil. All right, bye. See you over there. There we go. You want to come up, Howie? Who wants to come up? 
I'm throwing a link out there for somebody. When we get done here, make sure you're going over there and checking Gil out. Uh, that uh, nurse Amy and her husband are pretty pretty bright guys. Oh, that's not my house. I don't have near enough money to have a house that nice. <laughs> oh, here we go. How you come up here? Here he is. I will. Hey. Took a rose thorn in the chin. Oh, man. And I was doing that video earlier. Yeah. You're still bleeding? Oh, yeah. I, I had to dig out the thorn, you know. <laughs> yeah. The way it is. I cleaned the pocket knife first, so. <laughs> there you go. Make sure you sterilize everything. You sure, you sure can see it, hey? <laughs> oh, yeah, I can see it right there. Well, you're, I, I put a lot of climbing roses near the trees for pollination, so that it draws in the bees. You know the smell of the pollen, and uh, you know you have to be careful. I've got one here. I've got three inside here, thorns. But what they're hooks, you know, they, they're not just an in and out like a. It's got a little a barb on here. Yeah. Make a mess of you. <laughs> oh, well. You gotta be careful. So how'd you get those trees? How'd you look out and get those trees? I got I got two uh I got two um chestnut Chinese chestnut trees from the city of Victoria. The the, the horticultural engineers and whatnot in the city there they had a booth and uh, I knew I knew uh, the one person there, she was the she was the administrator of the horticultural department, vegetation department. So she gave them to me. They're well, about foot tall. Well, that doesn't matter. They'll grow. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And then I, I ended up with some, I ended up with some ginkgo biloba as well. Oh man, That's powerful food. Yeah. yeah. I got about seventy-five types of uh, greens and cabbage and stuff like that. And uh, and uh, I didn't pay for any of this stuff. I, it's an exchange. I brought in a, I brought in about forty pounds, maybe fifty pounds of sunchokes, two different kinds. Uh, so I was able to take whatever I want from the entire exchange. And there was a couple thousand people there. So wow, the video's cool. going up later. It's an eighteen-minute-long video. Yeah, I'll be watching it for sure. You no, know, it's got some cool tips in there, and 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 people that are selling cool products. Like, so everybody uh, was on there like bartering back and forth. Basically. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, um, oh yeah. You 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 can barter. You can you can pay for like a one dollar gets you like two hundred kale seeds. Wow. So you know, I and seed exchanges are are around you. You just have to find them. Find the horticultural society. And uh, and th th there'll be a seed exchange every just before spring starts. Everybody exchanges, and they're all over North America. I've been to a ton of different ones, but this uh, is my favorite one. I wait all year for it. Uh, I like yeah, or, them. I don't know if they do that around here or not. Surely I, would, surely uh, will. Farmers exchange seed all the time. Uh, yeah, I have to look. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and 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 you what you do is if you don't find one in your town, you start one. You start you go door to door and you find every gardener that collects seeds and invite them over. It's a okay. it's an extreme like your own thing. I have a park right up the road here. That'll do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was uh, there was a lot of people, a lot of talent there. I met old friends there, and they brought gifts uh, for me. Oh, one of them was really cool. It's Marusha. That's pretty cool. Oh, and a new type of potato, too. I got this. Look at that thing. No idea. They told me. I can't remember. It's a white potato. Well, it, it grows wild here. And uh, so they gave me a couple of them. But they also gave me this one. This is Marusha. This is, uh, this is related to the... Um, to, uh, um, You've talked about those before. Yeah, yeah, this is a different one now. This is another one. 
And yes, I've talked about, I've had them on before. Yeah. And, and so I got that and uh, just different people. This one here was Brother Nature's Seeds. He gave me a bunch of stuff. And uh, there's, um, I'll just show you a couple of them here. Yeah, I'm starting to feel pretty here. good. I'm going to make a couple of those bins that you grow potatoes in, you know, where you just cut the potatoes up and keep adding soil in. I'm going to make, I think I'm going to make a couple of those this year and set them right outside by the fence. Nice. Yeah. I'm this starting is to feel so a little better. I just keep getting better. I'm losing a little weight and stuff. And that makes yeah, me you look better. like you're healthier. Then yeah. I saw you in the hospital bed there, so we, you know I, you know, it, it was pretty rough on me, man. Try not to do that to me anymore. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> but just, this let is know, just let everybody know I wasn't online. <laughs> <laughs> this is sweet Sicily, and uh, it's sweet uh, herb. So if you if you got a hankering for a bit of sugar, this is the one you know. On. And it's got sugar in there that's low glycemic. Oh, okay. You know. That would be good for me. Sweet Sicily. And I did not. And it's got 196 wow. seeds in it. It was free. I got a bunch of them. I got uh, lemon verbena. It was in an envelope. So I hope that's all. That's all. <laughs> I got a parsnip. It was in a bag. These are all different people, you know, they all do things up differently. So I got parsley. This was a really interesting one. It was a snapdragon, and it's and it's uh, and then and it gets these pretty flowers to help the bees. You want to help the bees? Say, those are good for the flying insects and whatnot. Yeah, yeah, totally pollinators. They draw them yep. in, Will. You got it, yep. it's called polyculture when you do that. It's called polyculture. Yeah, I like growing stuff. I, I've always been uh, like to grow anything, you know. I grew with, I grew fun. weed and everything. I've grown weed and everything. It's just, I just love to do it, you know. It's fun. Yeah. This one here is arugula. I got it for free, and there's 100 seeds. This one here is uh, romaine lettuce. I got that today because I didn't keep any of my last year, so it's great that others had had kept it for me and gave it to me. But the the real interesting well, you know, one like that seed exchange and it just uh, gives the seeds for that grows in your area. Yeah, this all grew in my area. Okay, this is all local, and this has all been like grows year after year. Or it, this is calendula or calendula, and the flower is edible, and so is the leaves. Tastes like pepper. You just chop it up, put it on your steak or in your salad. Oh, that'd be like a natural pepper. For, yeah. sores, for sores on you. I uh, hope I'm not taking up too much of your time. Oh, I love uh, talking to, to you about your oh, growing. Okay, good. Because this is green and red chard I got for free. 250 seeds. Wow. That, you're going to have a really... You're gonna have a really big forest this year. Uh, oh, oh I, I have millions of seeds in my seed bank, like different than these ones. These will are new, but I have millions of seeds, and I've given out millions too over the uh, years. Oh yeah, that's the best gift you can give anybody. And this is red Russian kale here. You can hear it, red oh, yeah. Russian kale, and these are fava beans. These are nitrogen fixers. These ones here, I might as well open some and show them to you. What they do is you plant them in the winter time. I know it sounds strange, eh? Hey, uh, Timor uh, wants to know if you know your opinion on uh, polyspores. Don't know much about them. Don't know anything about it, polyspores? A little bit, not much. This is the fava bean. You see, I got them here. You see them? Okay. And this this you plant in the Pacific Northwest. You plant it February 1st. And then it starts growing. Mine are already five inches tall. Oh, wow. Three, four, five inches tall. And this takes nitrogen from the air and puts it in the ground in these nodules. So that when you're trying to grow food beside them, like in a polyculture, uh -huh. it picks up that nitrogen because nematodes have already eaten it 
and microbes have broken it down. Well, I you wish see? I had knew, known you when I was living out there. Well, it still can grow whatever you want where you are. You yeah. get healthier when you grow your own, hey? Here's a, uh, here's, uh, oh, see, this is Swiss chard, and the lady grew it right here where I live, August of 2019, and with her name, look. See? Swiss chard. And I live in Saanich, British Columbia, <laughs> and there's the date, and there's there's her name, look. And and she she give that out, hey. Wow, that's there's, pretty there's hundreds of people there that gave wow. out seed. Yeah, it's the best that's time amazing. of my life. That's I amazing. love it. Yeah, this one here is runner beans. This one here, and what they do is they they what you do is you plant these near a tree or a shrub, and then they run up into the tree and the shrub, and then all the beans are hanging there, and you don't have to grow them in your spot where you're growing tomatoes and stuff because you want the sun, right? But this is one you attach to like a pole or a tree or a shrub and it just grows all over it and uh another and, question for you. you got time for another one sure they want to know if uh how do lima and butter beans fare in northern uh northern soils well you i make my own soil i don't you know the indigenous soil that's there is 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 depleted because uh the animals that were pooping on it, like buffalo and deer and and uh, antelope, are gone, right? And birds, they were pooping on the soil, making making soil. So you have to you have to improve your soil, and it's called pathway soil bank. And you make make it in layers, coffee grounds, kitchen waste, and 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 lawn clippings. There's a video on my channel. It's called it's a it's a playlist called Soil. That's all it talks about. There's like 50 videos, nothing but soil, how to make it for free oh, wow. in your environment in layers. What's the name of that one? It's called Soil. Soil. And, and, yeah, and it's on my playlist. And it's all videos that I made of me making soil for the past few years each time I make Pathway Soil Bank. I don't do compost because that's work. I don't <laughs> like it. Well, it depends on how you make it, you know, if you have it where you can just throw it out the back door or something, you know, and let it just sit there. <laughs> That's about it. That's about it. <laughs> That's but I make it in layers, and I put biochar and wood ash on it. Uh -huh. It's like super soil. I mean, I make soil that's just, I mean, it grow at anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, you know, you improve a microclimate, too. It's like an incubator for a newborn baby. You got to watch it and look after it. You really want healthy food you can grow like i grow satsuma oranges outside in canada hey and lemons and loquat i bring in my avocados though yeah you can grow anything anywhere you just got to monitor how would you feel if you're from brazil like avocados and then you throw them out in 50 to blow weather it's not going to fare very well but if it's sunny and warm out and it's not freezing you can put your avocado out in the, out in the shaded area they don't like direct sun but each plant you study, you'll have a concept of observation. And then just repeat it if it works good for you. Uh, Gary, uh, I got a guy out there, uh, Gary Dolan. His channel name is Food for Permaculture. You're talking about Howie. His channel name is Food for Permaculture. And that's the guy you want to go to if you want to know anything about growing anything. Go over and check out his playlists. This is purple orac. This you can scrape any soil and throw it on the soil, and it'll grow. It's great in the salad. This is walking stick cabbage that I got today. It grows a big walking stick for you, for real. <laughs> and you eat yeah. the cabbage all year round. This is coriander. You put it in your, uh, you know, like chili and stuff. And that grows all year round in the Pacific Northwest. And in Southern California, it can grow all year round coriander. M Mexican parsley is, is what it's known as. I'm just digging in my bag here. Um, holy basil, I got this 200 seeds today for free. 205 seeds, sorry. Uh, 205 seeds for free? For free of holy basil. Yeah, I don't pay for it because I, I um, I I brought in in exchange, you know, like 
there's more coriander and uh, here's some nice here, here's more fava beans you, you, you want to plant lots of fava beans radishes peas those are all nitrogen fixers in your soil and uh -huh. then that takes the nitrogen out of the air and puts it in the soil. So then when you do grow carrots there or tomatoes or whatever, it's the nutrients are there. You just rotational crop with nitrogen fixers. There's two types of nitrogen fixers. There's your annual ones and then there's your perennial ones. And uh and I got another question nitrogen for you. Fixers. Old man wants to know uh if I can ask you about growing Chinese cabbage in uh, the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's a good one to grow. It grows all year round here. But you know, just because you grow it in the spring and it doesn't work out in the summer because it got warm, it'll finish off in the fall or next spring. You just keep, just leave it there. Don't pull it out. And a lot of cabbages, you can cut them off and let them regrow. Same with kales. You just keep cutting them back. And you can get three, four crops of cabbages here. And especially those Chinese ones, they grow really easy. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one to have. You always got a bit of soup or some stir fry. Go with a venison steak or a few clams. You know, it's a very good one. This one's poppy. I, I got the pink poppy, the opium poppy. Uh, oh, cool. Well, if I ever had to make my own morphine, I could now. I, I can do that. Yeah, that would be cool. So you never know. You just never, never know. know. Especially uh, nope. SHTF, you never know. Yeah. You know how to make it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've done it before. Huh. Yeah. yeah I have my own hey. apothecary. Okay. I should show you guys my apothecary sometime. You I, I, like, I just keep a lot of, like, medicine there. Like, I'll keep, like, a, a CBD or something like that or... It's not a huge apothecary. It's just a few items, and you know, it's well, not a lot. Get, get done, right? Yeah, this is a um, a pink hollyhock. This is a, a sweet leaf. It's it's related to the 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 mallow where you get marshmallows from. This one here is decent to chew on, boy. I'll tell you, when you got a hankering for something sweet, uh -huh. well, it's a hollyhock. It's pink with a marshmallow. It's, it, as soon as I seen it, I went, oh, I want that. I have several <laughs> growing, though. Well, you can get a killer out of wild lettuce, right? Have you ever have I seen that done? Yup. Yeah. More calendula. Oh, here's one that someone brought in. And it, they made it up out of their own, uh, you know, like writing paper. See? Oh, oh yeah. They made their own little envelopes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's called French spinach, red orac. And if this grows, you just scrape the ground with a rake and just throw this seed down on the ground and then oh, rake it in a little bit. Way. I love that. <laughs> yeah, and it just grow anywhere. Yeah. So as soon as I seen it, I went, oh, and there was the only one there. It was someone just put one there, and I went, oh, that's mine. <laughs> <laughs> so I took that, and I got more arugula. And then I got invited to um, a cheese-making shop. A shop at making cheese at our eco village, and I knew the lady too, and I knew her name, and she didn't know who I was. I went out, and I told her her name. Hey, she's just <laughs> looking at me like, "How did I know her name?" Hey? And her first <laughs> and last name, I knew it. Oh hey. wow! I've seen videos on her before, and she's like, "Wow!" And I said, "I've been to your house, hey, and I paid them fifty dollars for a tour. Paid them fifty dollars for a tour of all the cob houses that are built." Right there from, uh -huh. from nothing. Uh, wow, they're yeah. raptor houses. That's beautiful. How they make those cob houses, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So I get I get to go to this. I signed up for it. It's a cheese making hey, thing. You guys yeah. have any questions for Howie? Just put them in there. I'm trying to uh, retrieve them for him. Also, the, the the university here, I made contact with them. And they do permaculture at their university, and I've been invited there as well. Wow. Yeah. To come to them. Yeah. And this is the place I was at today. It's called Victoria CD Saturday. And they have that That's every year. Yeah, and it and it could be up uh, like on the 20th, 15th, 17th. It's the it's this uh it's the second Saturday in February. Victoria? 
Is that yeah, the story? It's the story of Vancouver Island. You can take the Clipper from Seattle and go to it. Yeah, I've been to Victoria a couple of times. From, yeah, you, that's right. you said that. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to catch that Clipper right there in Everett. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then I have a really neat one. This is one of my favorite ones. They, have, they, are, they have a website for that place? Yeah. It's called cdsaturday.com. Yeah, I wrote it down. I was wondering if I could go there and maybe order some seeds from them. No, 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 no. I'll give you an address in a second there. They'll send you some free seeds. This is Dragon Tongue Beans. So what's and if that? you Dragon Tongue Beans. But if you if you if you here's a here's a here's an address here. See that there? That you can go on there and they'll exchange seeds with you. It's called we seed change dot org. We seed change dot org. And you go on there and you become one of their friends. What they do is they send a box around, you take some out and put some in and mail it off to the next guy. Okay, it's like an uh it's like seed PayPal or seed. Well, you, you get a hundred dollars of the seed for like five bucks to mail it to the next guy. And the next <laughs> guy puts in what he's got lots yeah. of. You take out what you need. And there it is there. These are the ones I went to see today. And I ended up with dragon tongue beans. <laughs> what, is a, what is a dragon tongue bean? What's I have no like? idea. You have no idea? It's probably like a string no. bean? I don't know, but it, I've never had dragon tongues before. <laughs> So that's about it. I might have a couple more I do. Oh, this is interesting. This one here is a Green Globe Artichoke. Okay, Prepper Spence. Thanks for coming by, my brother. I'll see you soon. Thanks for coming. Artichokes. Wow, nice. Yep. They'll grow on des desolate wasteland. They'll grow oh, they anywhere. Grow, like yeah, they, they grow just about anywhere. Yeah. And this one here is Italian parsley I got. And this one's from all different people. Yeah, a lot of different folks. Last but not least, this came from the city of Victoria. Yeah, there's some education there, boy. And she's the one that gave me the trees, the, the chestnut trees. Yeah. So those will grow uh, chestnut trees. Where do they grow best at? Anywhere. Anywhere? Anywhere. You think yeah. they grow in this uh, barren place here? Well, well, a barren place you're telling me this could be cold <laughs> and hot. Yeah, it has all four seasons. <laughs> yeah. So you'd want, you know, have a look around what's in your area already established. Yeah. And you should the work best, uh, even the evergreen trees here, they they don't grow very good. You know, they try to, they the try to yeah, they try to grow them, but they don't really do very good. You, you make your own soil with Pathway Soil Bank from my videos on my playlist there, uh, and I'll guarantee you, you will grow food. And it doesn't matter if you're at the North Pole. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I, I'd grow coconuts at the North Pole with human manure and a, and a, and a rocket stove, man. I know I would. <laughs> I, <laughs> I would. I'd give it a shot. I, you you would, know, <laughs> I had coconuts growing here for three years, hey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. A lot of fun today. I'm glad you had a good time. You Very good time. I got lots of video. Tons of video. I don't know how I'm going to get it all up. One's like 18 minutes long. I just walked around and interviewed every single vendor and seed seller and jam maker and you name it. And I just cut them down. Just cut them down into little ones, you know, and put a bunch of them up. Yeah. Well, you could do that too. Yeah. Yeah. I got like I got over 300 videos up now. It's like oh, yeah. I've been watching. Time. I've been watching. You're doing pretty good. Yeah, 300 plus, and you know what? I never intended to do more than a dozen. 
That's that's the bizarre part. <laughs> that's that's where it, that's where it all comes in, you know. And it's the people that do pretty good, they don't plan on doing nothing. And it just kind of comes to it, you know. Yeah, it, it well, just I makes. I just, well, just kind of dinked around, you know. And then the more you, the more people you get following you, the harder it is to keep up. Yep, yep. Well, I don't mind like if people ask questions or or they want advice. It's all free to me. Yep. I didn't make the channel to make money. I'm not. I'm retired. I don't need money. Yeah, but I made the channel to help save the planet. You know. Yeah. And the keep human race. The planet, keep the planet safe. Yep. Yeah, that's that's it. It wasn't, it wasn't for money. It was it was just to show some people how to make soil and grow a bit of food and, and make a food forest in on desolate land. That's all that were in the inner city. But I've ended up it's been it's morphed. <laughs> it's morphed into a lot more. You get this whole new family. You, oh, you, yeah. I mean I'm I'm celebrating people's birthday. I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do you know you just do you know them, you just don't know them personally. Yeah, it's like little villages on here. It's yep. a little village. And that's yep. what works, you know, is a village works. A community, a city doesn't work. I never seen the good side of no city yet. All yep. detriment. You see people walking the street, man, or standing on the corner. Why don't people walk the food forest and stand in the food forest? Make exactly. more sense. Nobody shoots at you there. <laughs> in right, the city, guys, if you guys not. want to know anything about how I go back in the in the chat there and find that link. I put a link to his uh, channel in the chat. Go check oh, him out. Yeah, yeah, definitely check it out. Growing your own food, even if it's just start somewhere. I got a good friend, you know, I made over the YouTube in Florida. And he's always talking about you got to start somewhere, even if it's a bucket with lettuce in it or a tomato. You're starting somewhere. And that's what counts. When you eat an apple, those seeds should be going into some soil in a little container and growing it in the windowsill. A whole new apple shows up. And you're always told this programming, oh, don't do that. that, that you'll get a bad apple. Well, so far, I've had none of the delicious apples, and none of that was true. Yeah. And, None of it was true. And then, then there was this thing that, because people were going, oh, you grew your own lemons. They're all going to be sour lemons or this. Well, lemons are supposed to be sour. They're supposed to be sour. <laughs> yeah. you know, it just, it's crazy. Just whatever you grow, perhaps you won't use it in the same manner as the previous fruit. Like if it's a good eating apple now, maybe it's an apple for storage next time. Or maybe it's an apple that the deer come and eat. You know, deer are good eating. <laughs> yeah. You hear my little dogs going off there. Oh, yeah. I got a couple of those things myself. I saw a bee today. My first bee. I saw a wasp last week. Spring must be around the corner. It is. I've seen daffodils, rows of daffodils today. Yeah, I, and and I saw I saw um, a camellia blooming and a roto. Yeah, I saw lots of things blooming today. Cherry blossoms. I couldn't get no video. It's raining. The cherry blossoms, whole street full of them. I didn't stop there. It was raining because you're just going to get rain on the camera. Yeah. I can't find it. I'm going to put that challenge up from uh, Prepper Smith. You guys didn't see it. He's got a challenge out there. Once you guys uh, do a revised uh, go bag and post it, it's a challenge to everybody. What is the challenge? It is a revised go bag for this year. We'll be right back. Someone's at my door. Alrighty. All right. Who else wants to come up here? We're going to stay on for about another half hour. 
Hey, Gabbard. How you doing, my friend? You want to come up and tell everybody about your channel? Let me know. I'll send you a link. Hey, Will, I have to go. All righty, buddy. I really appreciate all that information. Take care. I got a lot of it written down. Thanks. Anytime, Will. Anytime. I appreciate it, Howie. Anytime. See you next time, buddy. All right. You guys get all that information? He has a bundle of it. Yeah, I, love, I like talking to Howie. He, if you guys want to grow stuff, he's the man. Him and the Green Wizard. I don't know if you guys know the Green Wizard or not, but he's another good guy to go to. Yeah, I think the Green Wizard should have him on his show. The two of them together do a lot of stuff. Look there, my airline's all clear on here. <laughs> Blue Healer, I saw that uh, comment you made about uh, cedar trees growing here. <laughs> I don't think they grow real good, not in my part of the state anyway. It's so darn hot in the summertime, they turn brown because of lack of water. Gavin must have left. How are you doing, Miss Lori? Okay, you guys, don't forget we're going to go over and see Gil when we get done here. He's going to have a guest. It's going to be Nurse Amy's going to be on there and her husband. I'm doing good, Lori. I think I'm going to live. Well, I'm going to try to stay on here till uh, 5 o'clock, and I think that's about when he starts, Lori. Everybody got their plan together, right, for their assets that we were talking about? Let's see, I'm trying to catch up here on the chat. Uh, we're trying to keep up with Howie, so... Tibor left. Darn, I didn't catch him. Hey, there's Reed. How you doing, Reed? Good to see ya. You just missed Howie. He was telling everybody what to grow and where. Oh, man, water heaters. Oh, that is a pain in the butt. Maybe it's just the check valve. Did you check the check valve? We were talking about what are you going to do with your plan in SH, with your assets during SHTF? What is your plan? That's what we were talking about. And then Howie came on was telling us about... Uh, all these great seeds he picked up today. He went to a seed exchange. Picked up a lot of different seeds and he was explaining what he got, uh, what it takes to grow them, what, uh, answering some folks' questions in the side chat about some uh, questions they had. Uh-oh, between the seams. <laughs> It time for a replacement. 
Familia, how are you doing? Good to see you. You don't just happen to have an extra one laying around, do you, Reed? Oh, yeah, he said that you can check your area, Reed, and uh, find where they have, uh, uh, like, seed fairs where you go and exchange them with each other. Take some of the seeds you have and exchange them with others for seeds that you don't have. That's where he had been today, so he was all happy and camper about that. <laughs> oh, you do have an extra one? <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> well, better get busy then, huh? I guess we know what you're going to do with your weekend, huh? We do a, just a quick rundown on your on the assets part of the uh, stream. Is remember that you, we were talking about the food. Uh, how long uh, that you personally think that you should have on hand? Remember, we're all going to try to hunker in, or that's yes. Uh, that's the idea I get from most folks that I talk to. Is most people are going to try to bug in and just have a bug out location some folks already have their are living at their bug out locations but do you have a backup location for that so then you have to figure out if you're going to have how much food you're going to have on hand to carry you through that i personally think that you should have two years of food backed up but when Gil was on here, he seems to think that seven is good. But, you know, back when I first started prepping and doing prepping videos, I was of the same thought. I thought that you would have to stay or have basically seven to ten years of food stacked up. But I'm finding out that over time and uh, <clears throat> that if you have basically two years and are are producing food along with that it should two years would be good enough to have on the shelf and he's saying he's saying that you know he thinks that you should have seven years because if you have one year that your seeds don't produce then you're gonna uh, be cutting yourself off but if you start now with the two years on shelf and our gardening besides that you are already uh, honing in on your skills that you need to keep producing food through the year so that you can, at the end of that year, take it and put it on the shelf. That's my that's my thoughts on it. What are you guys' thoughts on it? Yeah, uh, you're a bug-in guy. But what if, you're, what if your uh, bug-in location was compromised? Reed, if you got your uh, bug in location compromised, do you have a backup plan for that? Seven to ten years. Yeah, that's what I thought in the beginning myself. But if you start, like I said, if you start now, you build up to two years and start gardening along the way, or not gardening, but producing your own food along the way, that by the time an SHTF situation occurred, you would already be uh, well into uh, keeping that food, that, uh, the food level going while you're growing. Or that's what I look, that's how I'm looking at it. So if you had one year that didn't uh, actually go in your gardening, or your food's growing, you would still be that two years on the shelf no matter what. So that would give you another season to get another good crop. 
because there's a point you may not be able to stay at your bug out location. You can't take all that darn food with you. What are you going to do with all that darn food? You're going to leave it for the guys coming for it, right? I'm just one of those old guys that just have a hard time giving up what I've already saved up for. <laughs> On chairs and beer. <laughs> So that is my opinion is, and that, you know, I'm only one guy, but multi-years is a good idea. I'm thinking two years with a garden, always retrieving the food. So if you have one bad year, you're going to have enough food to get by till the next year that produces. And then if you should have to pick up and go, you're taking all your food with you. Colt 49ers, how the heck are you? Cheers to you as well. And then you also have to think about other stuff, you know. You got to think about taking uh, some water with you. You got to think about your guns and your ammo and whatever else you use for your protection, bows and arrows. Getting to Henry. Henry makes some pretty good rifles. I've been looking at their catalog. Henry makes a pretty good 22 uh, long rifle. I've been looking at one of those. Those aren't too expensive either. Twenty two would be really good in case SHTF happened. That way you would. 22 uh, ammo is not really that expensive. How about, uh, how about you, Reed? You got to learn how to reload all this ammo? I've always wanted to learn how to reload, but it gets to be a pretty expensive hobby. Anybody in here do their own reloading? Kills on duty. How are you? Welcome to the stream. I'm doing great. All right, you guys, don't forget to hit that like button. There we go. Trying to get an accurate count here.
you must be talking about black powder, Reed. Is that what you're talking about? Black powder? Don't forget, you guys, if you guys don't know each other out there on the side chat, make sure that you are visiting with each other and taking care of the situation. Make sure that you're getting to know each other and watching each other's videos. That's very important. Yes, we know you're a creator. Who knows how to replace a hot water heater? We need some help. So what, Reed? You're looking to get a rifle? Is that what you're talking about there? Yeah, I'm looking at a CZ. I've already got one handgun, but I'm looking to get another one, a smaller one, one that can seal better. What size handgun does everybody like? And go down the hall. Tell that guy I said hi, old man. You guys can't hear me, right? My sound didn't quit working.
Just wondering. I used my uh, Chromebook for the StreamYard. I'm thinking about going back to my darn Hewitt Packard. Can't do as much on the Chromebook as I can the other one. You do a little reloading. It's an expensive hobby, but you know what? It's going to be well worth it if SHTF ever, ever does a cure. A cure. A cure, a cure. Well, casting the bullet should be easy, Reed. All you have to do is have that mold thing, right? And then just uh, melt the lead and pour it in there. Ron, all right, how are you? I was just talking about you a little bit ago. Howie was up here talking about uh, growing wheat, uh, seeds and everything, and I was telling everybody that you and him should get together for a live stream. You guys are both uh, kind of suited in the same area. It would be a great live stream if you guys did that. Oh, wow, yeah, you need to reload, brother. <laughs> Yeah, you should. I mean, that would make a good live stream, I think. I mean, he was on here and he was talking about some, he went to a seed, uh, let's see, what was he called? A seed exchange today? And was showing off all the stuff he got and was tell, answering people's questions as to uh, how they could take care of their stuff. And we got, to, I got to thinking, hey, it'd be cool if Ron was here. We could make kind of a good overture towards everything. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Come on mine anytime you want, Ron. You know that. Oh, you like the you like the six shooters, huh, Gunslinger? Is that what you're talking about? The wheels? Yeah, I've kind of been looking at some uh, CZs, Taurus. I'm looking at the nine millimeter CZ. Those are kind of sweet little pistols.
You just got off work at the cigar shop, Tyler? That got to be kind of a slow job, huh? Not real hard work. So all you do is work behind the till, isn't it? And stock those shelves. All right, CR, I'm out of here too, I think, in about eight minutes. I'm going to give her eight more minutes and I'm going to be down the road. Remember, when we get done here, you guys, I want you to go over and check out uh, Gil. He's doing a live stream with Nurse Amy. Three fifty-seven does definitely make a, a a statement, but man, that is a big kick from a small gun. <laughs> That's about right, Reed. How do you mess up a twenty-two long rifle? Yeah, I kind of like the way they look. Uh, I've only fired one because it wasn't mine, but that's what made me think about getting one. Oh, they still got that darn vaping going on? I thought they had curbed that down a little bit. <laughs> there you go, Reed. Make your own tobacco. Grow it out in the backyard, Tyler. That's how they did it in the old days. I should be thinking about buying some ARs. I hear they might be trying to outlaw them. Yep, Gil's Live is next. We're going to be getting out of here uh, momentarily so we can get over there. Remember, you guys, don't forget to hit the thumbs up on, my, uh, on the stream if you haven't done so. Trying to make up that time for me taking off being sick. All right, get back to your plumbing project. Fix that uh, hot water tank. Here, I'll give you a hand. Night, Reed. All right, you guys, about four minutes before he goes on, so I'm going to go ahead and slip out of here. I want to thank everybody for coming around today. We had a pretty good chat. Uh, Gil's up next, and I'll see you guys on Monday. You guys have a rest of your weekend, a great weekend, okay? See you later.